we're here with Shannon Robertson, an eight-year-old John Vincent fan. Um, we're here on What's Good with John Vincent, and we're going to talk about uh, anti-bullying. Hi, how are you, Shannon? Great. Good, good. So John is here. Um, we, we heard about you because your dad let us know that you, you watched some of John's anti-bullying videos. Mm -hmm. And so can you tell us a little more about, about the videos you saw and what you thought about them? Um, it was a long time ago. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Um, they were very nice, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, how do you, uh, why did you get uh, interested in that? Did you experience it? Um, experience yes. Anything? Okay. Someone okay. bullied me in school for no exact reason. This person said I called her stupid, and I said that I never did. And so she called me stupid one time, and I got very upset. I had to go see one of our teachers to help me get over it. So mm -hmm. but it's still, it's like someone kind of scars you and be really mean to you. It kind of feels like um, you don't belong, and it doesn't really feel good. And that's, a, that's the truth. And I just had a, a friend on earlier. We were doing a couple interviews today. And uh, it, it goes across all ages. At the end of the day, everybody deserves respect, right? Everybody yeah. wants to hear something nice. Even if someone, like, even if that person be mean to me, I will still help them. I help people with math. And I got student number two times. And it was because I helped students with their math, help them um, do stuff. Well, that, that's amazing. And see, yes. that stuff makes you feel good, right? Because, like some people get very frustrated with, in my class. So then when they get really frustrated, I'm like, hey, do you want some help? And they're like, yes. And I point out what to do and they get kind of easier at it. So, uh -huh. so what you're saying is it feels good to help people out. Yes. Okay. And it, it, and it, it hurts when people say things that hurt us. Yeah. And that quotes from, from, I was bullied very, very bad when I was a kid, really bad. I mean, I, I got beat up, physically beat up, called names, everything. I was afraid to go to school. I would pretend to be sick because I didn't want to go to school because I was fearful of going there and getting bullied. Uh, it was probably from the third grade all the way to the junior year in high school. And, uh, it was terrifying. And, and and I say to people, what happens when you're a kid, you remember the rest of your life, it affects who you are. So I want to tell you something right now. Don't ever give up on yourself. Yes. Don't ever think that you're um, uh, any less of anyone else. With that, yes. nobody is any better or worse than you are, right? Mm -hmm. We're all the same. We're all people, humans on this planet trying to survive. And what we do is the kinder we are to you are with people in school. You're helping other students with, like you said, math. Uh -huh. And the, when the person started bullying me, I feel more comfortable talking it to my mom. So I immediately told her what was happening. Right. Right. And I uh, first got terrified of actually telling one of my adults at school. No, I was you terrified of that. You tell your yeah, and one of my other classmates got bullied by that person that bullied me. And I was really angry at that person at that time, bullying someone else. So I talked to her. She thought that she would get in trouble. And I'm like, you won't get in trouble because this person bullied you with no exact reason. Because I'm like, did, did you do something to this person? She's like, no. And I'm like, tell your mom this isn't a, a um, acceptable. It's great that you went to your mom. That is it's great. Yes. It's great that you yes. feel yes. And a while after, like a few months after, I find my mom finally decided me for tell a teacher because I was very scared of what they would say. Sure. And your mom wants to do what's right and she doesn't want to have, uh, you know, sometimes they want things to be resolved. And, and, not, and then she was like, okay, I have to go talk to the teacher. And that's awesome yeah. of your mom, right? Yes. Anytime you feel threatened or anything. You go to your parents, you go to somebody in the party, you tell them what's going on. You let people know if you ever feel uncomfortable, you gotta tell somebody. Because you need you need to feel safe, you need to feel comfortable, and you need to feel happy, and you always deserve that. And mm -hmm. don't let anybody ever let you feel the, uh, any yes. guilt, ever, ever. I know. And sometimes we go and talk to our parents or a teacher, is that your brother in the back? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and sometimes we go and talk to them and maybe, you know, 
they don't say what we want to hear and that's okay too not everyone knows exactly mm -hmm. what's right and what's wrong um as long as we're talking to each other and figuring out together i think that's a great start and mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here and talking to us about bullying because that's where it starts it's, it's talking to each other like john said you know whether we're older or younger um whether we think we've been bullied or if we haven't been bullied you know we all have mm -hmm. uh, you know an opinion about yes. how we want to treat others and how we want people to treat us and i know like i wanted to do a like the bullying club and i thought the first person that would join would be my helper like would help decide which like if my we have another teacher that helps with that so if she's busy doing with with another kid we could handle it and um like she could decide if they're angry frustrated um sad and all that stuff and then they would go in a group like there would be some other people in each group to calm them down that's great or make them happy if they're sad support system for each other to make yes. sure that you guys are heard and to make sure that you guys are comfortable going to school when yep. you know i don't I, I don't know right now are you guys going back to school or are you guys doing e-learning um we're like on the face chat okay. Just like this um, we're on the face chat okay gotcha gotcha is that a hard transition for you right now um yes it like everyone's trying to get on the internet it glitches we i had to go er, get out early because my teacher's um tablet wouldn't work so we had to i yeah. just had to do my math and how how are you dealing with everything going on like you know are, are, are you you know are you kind of bummed that you can't be going to school right now yes yeah. yes we got like every a few two like um every a few times we can like go with our classmates and do something not too much very that the corona will get to us just something kind of separate um nothing about touching our hands or anything like that and one of my classmates um i talked her into reading a magic treehouse book and she didn't know how to read so i read her a chapter because i she went into it oh that's very nice yeah. You're you're a very smart young lady. I mean, you're yeah. eight years old. You speak so well, Thank and you. you know, we our guest before would saying we can learn from people who are younger. And I would always think you learn from your elders, but you know, you can learn from people who are younger. Ali's you know a lot younger than I am, and I, I learn a lot of things from her, and that's why she's on this show that because she can teach me and my bosses who are younger than me kind of put me in perspective with stuff. You know, I have Sam and M Melissa here, the producers, they teach me things that I had no clue about with, with, with the technical side of like doing a podcast. Right. I don't know a lot about that. No, I'm getting the jivers right now. You're <laughs> I'm, getting so I'm, um, I'm getting very scared. Very what? scared. Why? It's my first time. Oh, <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing fantastic. You're doing I know one time I was at this, I had to do like, um, I wanted to get in, we have like this little, you can do a, like a little show for your whole family, like the Lion King and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And one time there was like 160 people trying to do that and you had to sing in front of everyone. And I was terrified. The first, the first time I sang in front of people, I was terrified. Yes. The tenth time I sang in front of people, I was terrified. The hundredth time I sang in front of people, I was terrified. Yes. I'm not comfortable, but I still get butterflies. Don't get me wrong. Yes. You know, it, it, I know like, I could barely sing. I was so scared because everyone just like stares at you. I know they want to look at you, but it's very like. What's your favorite bad. song to sing? Huh? Don't What's your favorite song to sing? Um, I think it's. The um, dang it! I like the Trolls Road tour songs. Those are my favorites. Which one is that? Songs. <laughs> what song? Trolls World. Yeah, oh. Trolls World tour. Okay. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. You want to do any singing or no? No. Okay. No. 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 <laughs> you want me to do some singing? What should I sing? What What should I sing? I don't know those songs. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> How about your song? I don't know. Like Louis Armstrong, What a Wonderful World. Um, yes, my pa, my grand, like my grandpa came over and uh, did that song, and then my brother changed it. Of green, red roses, too. I see them bloom for me and you. You know, I think to myself, What a wonderful world. Yes, it's, it's timeless. It's always What a Wonderful World, right? Thank you for the applause. You're too kind. <laughs> We love you, and, and, and what other questions do you have for me or Allie? 
That's, um, nothing really. That's it. I have a question before we oh. Oh. I actually wait, I know a question. Um when you were a kid, what did you dream of doing? Cuz I get Me I, What? Me? Me? Yeah. Um when I was a kid, I thought of playing football, then I was the first one cut my freshman year in high school, so I threw that out the window. Mm -hmm. Then I grew 8 inches to 6 foot 5 and I played football. Then I played in college, was all American, and then I played in uh, pro in Germany. So I thought I was going to be a football player. I know. I, I was. I was born earlier than I was supposed to, and also I, I'm very tall than I'm supposed to. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, a president and a chef. Nice. Ooh. I like that. Yes. So you'll be in the White House, and you'll be able to cook. Cool. You'll be, you do both. That's it. What's your favorite thing to cook? Um. We, me and my brother love this thing. Our grandma makes steak, um, and it's my my favorite food. Oh, that's everything. awesome! Everything, yes, that's awesome. everything in the world. If I tried anything, it would be my grandma's steak. Nice. <laughs> there you go. So you got to tell her get you. I need the recipe, so then I can do it. When I get older, I want to cook. Yeah, it. my mom. My mom tried, and she got it exactly. It's like no one could cook it except for my grandma. Uh huh. No one. But your mom got it. Away the recipe. No one can cook it. How about your mom? Did she get it right? What? Did your mom get it right? Did she get it right? No. It, my brother <laughs> loved it. Everyone, everyone loved it, but it didn't taste like my grandma's steak. It was just weird. <laughs> <laughs> Is your mom saying, what the heck? <laughs> I'm sure it tasted great. I'm sure it was wonderful. But that's awesome. President and chef. I love it. I love it. My mom, my mom told me to say that. I know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I love that because, you know, you, what we were talking about with my friend before, is the, the sky's not the limit, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's past the sky. You know, they always say the sky's the limit. No, no, go past the sky. He mm -hmm. told me that. And I, I think that's amazing. Yes. Me and me and my family have like black animals um, because like some people don't adopt them. We have two black cats, like one black and white two black, um, one black, black dog and one black and white. Oh, very cool. So you have, you have two dogs and two cats. Yes. Cool. One name, was it? Salem, Bowser, Sparty, and Sid. Love all the names. I love Bowser. I love that. Yes. Bowser is the viciousest one. I, I like to call, I always, I told my mom when we were talking about like, they, people think that, um, black animals are haunted. I said, Bowser is cursed by a demon when he's hyper. <laughs> <laughs> the most beautiful yeah. animal I've ever seen. Uh, if you look it up, I want to say it's a. It was a rare photograph that they caught, and I don't know if I can say if it was in South America or Africa. I think it was Africa. It was a uh, black spotted oh. leopard. Oh, look at that! Uh -huh. That's so cute. I want you to look that up. Uh, it's 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 a black spotted leper, and they caught it on this camera. Yeah, we've seen it. You've seen it? It's an amazing picture. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow, the eyes. It. It's yeah. It's amazing. Oh, I saved it on my phone for the longest time. I still might have it on. I lost my phone, but I still might have that picture. It is. It is such a cool picture. It's a yeah. Animal. Um, yeah. but like he is, but my Bowser. Like one time, he went under the couches, and he scared me that I screamed. And my mom was in the shower, and she's like, what happened? I'm like, Bowser scared me. She's like, Shannon. <laughs> I'm like, I got scared. It's okay. That happens. Sometimes he's very annoying, and I get angry at him. That happens, too. He, he beats up our little our, our girl cat. Well, we gotta he plays so that. rough. He like, nope. bites on their necks. The first nope. time we saw a cat, <laughs> bit on their neck. I'm like, we're like, Bowser, stop it. Right. Stop. <laughs> I'm going to kill one of the cats. Shannon, before before we sign off, is there anything that you want to share um, from your experiences um, with bullying and with, uh, did you start your club or is that something you want to start? Want to start. I haven't started it yet. I don't know when I'm going to do it. Might be a while. I don't know. I think my, probably after this all Corona, so it'd be easier instead of us having to FaceTime because then they could just deal with their parents, like do it with their parents. So. Yeah. Like and, I don't think, and I don't think anyone would get bullied because we're all being kind of at home. So, yeah, the only thing I say is always watch out for, which I didn't have to watch out for when I was a kid, was cyberbullying. And if you ever experience that, yes, right to your mom. 
Yes. Uh, we have like, this whole copyright technology class, and it told us to like do not answer, do not like do stuff that they tell you to do on the internet. Yeah. No, you, you go right to your mom. Anytime you feel uncomfortable, yes. you go to your mom and you yes. say, hey, mom, and you make sure you're always safe and you're feeling comfortable. Uh huh. Is there any any message you want to give to parents or teachers or other kids out there? Um, I think like watch out kind of for bullying because it like kind of it kind of scarred me because the person that bullied me it really still makes me want to cry inside very badly about what this person did to me. So watch out for bullying. That's what I'm saying. You got to watch out for bullying. Make sure if like, if you see someone crying, like ask them what's going on and talk to them about it. Like see if there's anything wrong or something. So, so you said you, it scarred you. And I want to ask you a question. Yes. Do you know why people bully? Why? Because they're not happy inside. After yeah. I got bullied, I became somewhat of a bully in, in, after college and in college because I was not happy because I got bullied when I was younger and I held that pain and that anger inside. So bullies bully because they're not happy. So when I wasn't happy, I wasn't the person, nicest person. My right? mom told me that the person that bullied me doesn't really get to see her dad. So right. my mom thought that was it because this person can only see them like on the holidays. And, and we have to we have to see the good in everybody. And, and yeah. you know what? That's that's you got to understand and, and and think how she feels and say you know what I can understand the pain she's yes. going through with stuff and the best thing you always do in life is be kind or be nothing and that's what I tell people if you can't be kind be nothing yes. I have to learn that it took me a long time to learn that but I learned that when I was, I got older mm -hmm. the best advice I can give anyone. I know because like I was confused when this person said that because I knew that I would never ever bully a student even if they bullied me i would never bully a student in my class well that's very kind of you yes even if i'm really angry at that person i can do feelings inside and i also have my diary so i can write it in like my feelings in there so you don't act your feelings you put them inside you put them you put them on paper yeah 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 process and then put it yeah. up because you don't like do violence to solve something you have to like um not do no violence and just try to like forget about it because then it might like you might forget about it and we'll feel good to you well you're very you're very smart and um you keep that connection with your mom and you go to your mom anytime you need advice she yes. sounds so smart and phenomenal you're very lucky and uh, just remember that and keep doing what you're doing and you're going to do great things in life. Thank you so much, Cameron, for being here.